Alrighty, hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. So for this week's video on Saturday, I thought we would go ahead and talk about Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram yet, I hope you'll go and give me a follow because that's also a way to reach out and uh, tag me in your doodle tutorials, as in the ones that I do. And then I put them at the end of my video uh, tutorial videos each week. So that's a way for you to tag me in your magnificent artwork that's inspired by my do doodle tutorials. One of the biggest questions that people ask me on my Instagram or on YouTube sometimes, I'll see the occasional question, how do you take pictures of your artwork and what do you, t what do you use to take pictures of your artwork with? Well, this video is going to tell you all about that today and how I edit my pictures of my art for my Instagram page. First question, what do I use to take pictures of my artwork? None other than my good old iPhone 6. It's nothing special. It's not a success. It's nothing too fantastic or anything like that. I just use my iPhone 6. And as you can see, the poor thing is old and it has little dust particles in the way of the camera lens. So it really is nothing special. It is almost a two-year two-year-old phone. <laughs> I will not take a picture of my artwork unless it is in natural daylight. So I do have a ring light. And sometimes it has a good kind of effect, but the biggest thing I could advise for all of you is to take pictures of your artwork in natural daylight. My drafting table is in front of my bedroom window, so I always have a nice clean surface to take pictures on of my artwork in daylight. So another big thing is I always want to have a clean surface to take my pictures on. You'll notice that if you look at any of my photos on Instagram, I always have a clean surface. So I will go and I will get Windex and I'll clean off the paint and stuff and everything unless I intentionally want it to look like an absolute mess. And I have props for around my picture. So I have the picture of Josh Groban from The Great Comet. And what I'm gonna do is I take a little bit of my props and that would happen to be the watercolor palette that I use. So it's always smart to use like actual supplies that you use to make the doodles with. So it's just nice to look at. So it gives a little bit, it also answers the question. What did you use to make this picture? Oh, I used colored pencils. Oh, I used watercolor. And then people can actually see that. And the same goes for my tanned tone sketches. I always take like a couple of pencils and I put them above the little doodle, that way people can see the brand. It's always nice to show the brand of the pens or the pencils or anything. That way people are looking at your pictures on Instagram and they see, oh, it's Prismacolor. Oh, it's Fabric Castell. Oh, it's Koi Watercolor. As you guys saw, I take about 10 or six pictures around that area of each and every single piece of artwork that I have. So, you can see, I, just so I can go through, pick my favorite one, and then I jump into my favorite apps when it comes to editing photos in general. My favorite iPhone app, and it is for Androids as well, is Afterlight. It is my favorite photo editing app. And after Afterlight, what I do with Afterlight is I go in, I pick out my favorite doodle that I took a picture of, and then I like to turn up the brightness just a bit in case it's a dark day like today is a little bit cloudy. So I like to turn up the brightness and then I jump into saturation around 35 and I always do this to all of my pictures. I want to amplify the colors just a bit. See, as you can see, I'm going back and forth and I, I do this to my colored pencil drawings and I do this to my watercolor drawings. And then I love to use a little bit of contrast. I don't do go too crazy with contrast. But this is the particular order that I go in. And then I go in with shadows. And I love playing with the shadows in every single picture just because it, I don't know, it just smooths it out for me. Then the very last step that I'll do is I'll go and I'll put a border around it. I like having borders on my artwork because one, you can see the whole thing and I don't have to crop it to a certain size on Instagram. And it, I, all of my pictures have borders on them, white borders. None of them have black or, uh, borders. Probably in, my, in the olden days I used to use black borders, but it, it just organizes it a little bit for me. And then here's another thing. I always put a watermark on my doodles 
before I post them on Instagram and I use PicLab for that and I'm pretty sure it's an Android and an iPhone app. But the reason why I strongly suggest all of you put watermarks, if you're an artist, always try to get some texting app and put your name on it because the worst feeling in the world is when somebody takes your artwork straight from your Instagram page and they put their name on it. Now, of course it's easy if somebody goes in and can blur out your name, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a little comforting when I do put my watermark on it because I do want, in case somebody doesn't give you credit or it's just a way for people to steal artwork and say, hey, this is mine because my name, your name's not on it. And I've, I've seen, I've even seen stories where people have had their designs taken from big companies and it just, it's horrible, but I mean, it's just a way to give yourself a little bit of credit and just to make sure that it is your art and nobody can go and take it and say, oh, I made this. No, you didn't because your watermark's on it. But it's just a safe thing to do on Instagram, especially for artists. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump on the good old app itself, Instagram, and I'm going to post this picture that I just took a picture of and edited for my Instagram. Now the only filter I ever use, ever, sometimes I won't even use a filter, but the only filter I use is Valencia. I love using Valencia. I don't know what it is about it. I love the way it lightens the colors. It defines it a little bit more. And I love the warm feeling that the filter has on my pictures. Another thing I strongly suggest for all of you to use is Hashtags. Always use hashtags on your pieces of artwork because you never know. Somebody could be just like, they could genuinely be looking through the watercolor hashtag just to see your piece of artwork show up. And sometimes if it's a certain hashtag, if yours has the most likes, it's going to go straight to the top of the page, which is really, really cool. And it's just a way for people to discover your artwork. Always use hashtags on your artwork on Instagram. I know they're annoying to look at, but hey, they are fun and they do help you get discovered on Instagram. But that's about my whole process for Instagram. See, nothing too fancy. Uh, I, If you want the full effects of Afterlight, I think you have to buy that on your iTunes store, I, uh, the App Store, or whatever if you have a Galaxy. You do have to buy it and everything, so... Um, that you have to purchase that and then pick lab you have to purchase if you want to have certain texts or fonts or anything like that that's the only thing you have to buy on there so some of them do cost a, cost a bit but I don't think they're too expensive but yes just go check out those apps for in your app store and check those out make sure you follow me on Instagram I really hope this was helpful Leave in the comments down below if you think this is helpful and maybe now, maybe you want to use some of these certain techniques that I use on my photos on Instagram, but who knows? It's just a helpful way. Social media is a great way to put your artwork out there, so make sure you're just trying to get it out there. And if you don't have a Instagram art page for your art, make sure you get your art out there so it can be discovered because just show it off because you're all talented. I know you are all talented. So show off your artwork on Instagram, use those hashtags and just be presentable with your artwork. Hope this helps and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by Dramatic Parrot today. Make sure you click on that subscribe button. And hey, if you like this video today, make sure you hit that like button as well. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all the fun stuff. And like my Facebook page. And if you haven't seen it already, I have started a vloggity vlog vlog channel on Wonderland Girl. So make sure you go ahead and check that out and subscribe to that channel as well. Other than that, I will see y'all later. Bye!